Alrighty, I'm uh, excited to introduce our next guest who's going to be talking about uh, marijuana. Mr. Evans Consulting Service concentrates on regulatory and licensing consulting for addiction treatment providers. He also serves as a citizen advocate on drug and alcohol policy issues. He advises on drug-free workplaces and schools and drug and alcohol testing. He serves as an expert witness on drug policy and drug testing procedures. And as a principal of the school, I'm very happy about that. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I could talk to you all day about this subject, so I've got 30 minutes. Um, you are getting a handout, and if you want further information, there's a list of organizations that you can consult with, and you can call me anytime, seven days a week, uh, email me. I'd be happy to provide any follow-up information for you. Um, I am a member of the Conservative Party. Uh, I live in New York and New Jersey, but my residence is in New York. Uh, I'm an attorney, so the first thing I want to cover is the states' rights issue. The marijuana advocates uh, claim that marijuana regulation is a matter of states' rights, and that's absolutely incorrect. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled on this a couple of times. I wrote amicus briefs in two of the cases. Uh, there is no question that, that marijuana regulation is uh, a federal matter, that the federal government has the right to regulate it under the Congress clause because marijuana affects interstate commerce. Judge Gorsuch, who will be just fought to get on the U.S. report, wrote an opinion on that uh, in U.S. Uh, versus Rutherford, saying clearly that this is not a Tenth Amendment issue, not a states' rights issue. Uh, Justice Kavanaugh also has issued an opinion uh, giving the same uh, general opinion when it came to the FDA. Um, I'm working on it. Oh, you're working on it. Okay. Um, some of you are geezers, I'm a geezer, and uh, we all recall the marijuana back in the 60s. Uh, and plenty of people who smoked marijuana back then got plenty stoned on it. Marijuana back then was nothing compared to the marijuana of today. Back then it was about 2 or 3 percent THC. They now have commercial marijuana products that are going to be coming into New York that are 99% THC. And that's the difference between maybe 3-2 beer and pure grain alcohol in terms of the impact. Uh, most of the studies showing that marijuana is damaging to your mental health and your physical health were done on the low-grade THC marijuana. Uh, now we're finding the high-grade THC marijuana and it has a devastating impact. Um, I got an email from a father in California on Sunday. Um, that's where I live. Um, Chatelier Lake in Upstate New York. Uh, his daughter had been over at a friend's house and uh, she wandered into the bedroom with the daughter of the parents of the home and they saw a bag of candy, gummies. And they started eating the gummies. Well, that nine-year-old girl wound up in the hospital with a psychotic reaction, first time use, with a psychotic reaction, uh, and uh, for the first time use of that. That is the impact of this high potency marijuana. The parents were very negligent about leaving that out, but under California regulations, it looked like candy, and uh, it had photographs of candy on it. Any kid picking it up would have thought that it was candy. So it's not your mother's marijuana anymore. It's a whole different product, and it's not just a natural plant anymore. Uh, it has now been refined chemically, they extract the THC from the plants, and people are now ingesting a chemical rather than something from a natural plant. Um, how many of you, just going to take a little quiz here, how many of you think that the drug cartels are looking out for your family's interests? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? How many of you think that the tobacco companies are looking out for your family's interests? Any votes? How many of you think that the manufacturer of oxycodone, the opiate industry, is looking out for your family's interests? What makes you think that the marijuana, marijuana industry is going to be any different? They are following the playbook of the tobacco and the opiate industries 
um, of uh, convincing people and legislators that there is a financial boon and that there's no real damage to uh, any of these products. Uh, Altria, um, do you need any help with that? Um, can I help you with that? Or just to get this up there. Okay. Um, Altria, which is one of the big tobacco companies, just invested $1.8 billion in marijuana. Uh, it's no longer uh, just a couple of potheads, hippie potheads smoking a joint. It's now a big predatory industry that is remarkably being dishonest about their products. We are now starting to see class action lawsuits based on fraud against the marijuana companies. I'm part of what I do, I have an organization called Civil, uh, Cannabis Industry Victims Educating Litigators, um, whose mission is to encourage litigation against the marijuana industry. The government is doing a very poor job of regulating marijuana, doing anything about it. It's illegal under federal law, but since the Clinton administration, the federal government has acted in a very impotent way in dealing with this. The FDA is finally now starting to come around and posting warning letters talking about how dangerous this is. And the Surgeon General is now speaking out against it. Uh, the experience in states, uh, uh, well, we're also now going to have the green bullet potentially, which is Coors. There's going to be marijuana beer, uh, which disappoints me because Adolf Coors opposed marijuana legalization in Colorado. But it looks like they're getting on board now with marijuana beer. Uh, now, we know about this opiate epidemic that we have. Uh, the marijuana has put out uh, the statements that we can use marijuana to deal with the opiate industry. Marijuana is a great pain reliever, uh, and we can get people to use marijuana, which is safer than the opiates. And they put out a study that said that states that had legalized medical marijuana had a 25% fewer opiate-related deaths. Well, that study was done really before the impact of legalization had taken place. It has been since reviewed and published in the Journal of American Medical Association. And that medical marijuana in those states is now associated with a 23% increase in opiate deaths. So at least medical marijuana and we assume recreational marijuana is not going to reduce opiate deaths. Um, Colorado, uh, opiate-related overdose fatalities, and I have a chart here that can show this to you, uh, since legalization of uh, uh, marijuana in 2012-2013, uh, that the opiate-related overdose fatalities have gone up substantially uh, because of that, um, connected with legalization. Now, uh, almost everybody, I work in the addictions field, almost everybody that I know that got into heroin addiction started with marijuana. There's no question that it's a gateway drug. There is now evidence that if you use marijuana during your teenage years, that it has a genetic impact on you. This is uh, information that's being put out by Harvard Medical School. Uh, that um, it can uh, cause a generational effect in making your children more receptive to becoming opiate addicts. Um, Lancet, which is a very prestigious British medical journal, uh, in 2018 came out with a study uh, about opiate use and found out that marijuana use, uh, there was no evidence that improved patient outcomes. As a matter of fact, those who used marijuana had a greater pain and lower self-efficacy in managing pain. Um, I uh, want to talk also about the connection with marijuana and mental illness. Uh, one of the problems we have in the uh, organizations that advocate against marijuana use is we have trouble getting people to believe us. And um, we come up with uh, proof on various things that people just don't believe. Marijuana seems to have this sort of protective shell over it. Now, when people approach marijuana, they don't do it rationally. And I think that that's uh, a result of a couple of things. And most decision makers, their personal experience with marijuana was with the low potency of marijuana that didn't cause as much damage. I, and I think that is part of the problem. I think also that people uh, perhaps want to be able to use marijuana. 
Uh, but it's stunning how we can present evidence to people and uh, it gets completely ignored. We did this when, when Canada was considering legalization of marijuana. And we had some of our best people go up there and talk to them, and they completely ignored what we had to say. The US government is now starting to come around. The FDA has gotten very strong on this. They've issued a lot of warning letters to the marijuana companies. Um, and the Surgeon General is speaking out. Sam Savick is now speaking out. Uh, the drug czar's office is now speaking out. Even President Trump, I saw an email today where a private conversation with him was uh, taped by this guy Parnas who's involved in the Ukrainian thing. And even Trump said, yeah, it causes traffic fatalities and lowers uh, IQ. So um, we hope the federal government will become more responsive. And the experience in states that have legalized it is that it has a very corrupting influence in the states. Uh, the marijuana industry are not stupid. And um, uh, they will come into a state, come into a town, join the Chamber of Commerce because it's now legal. Uh, they will fund Chamber of Commerce events. They will fund events for schools. Uh, the Girl Scouts in Colorado were allowing Girl Scouts to sell Girl Scout cookies in front of marijuana dispensaries. Um, and we raised hell with them about that and said, isn't that a very bad message to tell Girl Scouts to stand out in front of marijuana dispensaries? And they said, well, they sell a lot of cookies there because people get the munchies after using the marijuana. Uh, so that's, that's how bad things can get. That's how bad things can get. It really takes over the whole culture. Um, one of the things is having to do with marijuana-related psychosis. Um, there is no doubt, the science is very clear, that this high-potency marijuana can cause mental illness, can cause psychosis. In fact, uh, high-potency marijuana users were five times more likely to develop psychosis than other people, uh, compared to three times more likely for just lower-potency marijuana. Um, <clears throat> we are seeing this in the emergency rooms throughout the marijuana states. It's not in New York yet. Uh, what we're seeing in emergency rooms are people coming in with psychotic reactions, also uh, marijuana-induced uh, hyperemesis, hyperemesis, which is an uncontrollable throwing up. And uh, we call it scrumming, because people scream and they throw up and they come to the ER. And they're told, your use of marijuana is causing this. And they react saying, you're crazy, doctor. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and uh, this hyperemesis can be fatal because of the damage it does to your body. It's absolutely not true that marijuana doesn't kill people. It kills people all the time in car accidents, industrial accidents, and uh, physical problems. Um, I want to talk a little bit about CBD right now because CBD has a halo over it of being extremely healthy, good for whatever ails you, and so forth. Um, the FDA has now published research on CBD. Uh, there is now a CBD product. CBD is an antibiol, which is a product that is uh, extracted out of marijuana. And um, uh, it's, they've been putting out outrageous health claims about it. So one company did get a CBD product approved as a medicine. It's called Epidiolex. And this is a product that is Okay, very good. Okay. All right, let me just uh, take it this advance of it. Is it on? Which one advances you? Press all the buttons here. So it's on. Turn it on. Oh, I see. Okay, so which one advances you? that. Oh, 
Uh, I will keep going until we get to uh, safer than alcohol. Right there. Okay, stop there. That's where I'm at. So I'll just tell you, and you can advance. The okay, great. So they um, had this grown by a company that made sure that there was no contamination. It was grown and produced under FDA strict medicine standards. And they only approved it for two uh, rare seizure conditions among children when nothing else would work. This is CBD. Uh, well, here's what they found. It fries your liver. Uh, that it damages the cells in your liver. And it should only be used under medical supervision where you're getting your liver enzymes measured. So a lot of elderly people like myself are being told that CBD can help them. We are the ones most likely to have impaired liver function. And so you're going to be seeing lawsuits coming out. They're starting to now, uh, where these CBD companies are going to get sued uh, for, first of all, not warning people about this. Secondly, uh, for uh, the damage that they're causing to a lot of people. Uh, you know, oxycodone was uh, originally marketed as not being addictive. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, but they created a uh, patient rights organization saying that freedom from pain is a civil right and we deserve to have our opiates. These are all financed by the opiate companies. And they said that it was addictive. Well, now we have, what, 60, 70,000 people a year dying from opiate overdoses and fentanyl overdoses. Uh, this is the exact same link that the marijuana industry is, is dealing with. I'm sorry, if any of you are using CBD, I mean, you need to rent in your brain. Go ahead and deliver enzymes check. It can also make you unsafe to drive. The FDA just put out a statement on that, saying that it, it causes lethargy and sedation and so forth. Also, if you're on blood thinners, it messes with blood thinners and it messes with anti-seizure medication, all of which the CBD companies are not warning people about that. So somebody could be on warfarin and wind up having a problem because they're using CBD. Um, okay, uh, this slide. Uh, one of the arguments, well, anyway, one of the arguments they say is, you know, alcohol is legal, why should marijuana be legal? And I realize this is going to seem like an outrageous statement, but pound for pound, marijuana is more dangerous than alcohol. Alcohol appears to be more dangerous because so many more people use it. So you have more people showing up in the ER with alcohol-related offenses than marijuana because so many more people use it. But if we start having an equivalent of marijuana use with alcohol users, you will see, and I'm right, that pound for pound, marijuana is more, uh, more dangerous. Alcohol usually doesn't cause psychosis with your first, second, or third uh, try at alcohol. Um, and it doesn't cause some of the other uh, problems that it's going to cause. Um, here is a slide um, based on um, information um, about marijuana users and drinkers. And um, oh, now we're up at the second the first time either. Okay, just stop now. Um, the, the studies show that, that uh, particularly in workplaces, that on a percentage basis, marijuana users have more problems. Uh, they also say that marijuana legalization brings down uh, marijuana use, not so. Colorado is now number one in terms of first time use. And that the reason that that is, is because kids say it's now legal. You see the stores everywhere. Uh, there are more pot stores in Colorado than there are Starbucks. Okay, that's coming to New York. That's coming to your own town if the governor gets his way. Uh, that's what you're gonna see. Kids are gonna be walking past these stores and they're gonna think, hey, you know, why should not try it? It's harmless. Uh, next slide. This is the marijuana that most of us geezers recognize. I'm not accusing you of being marijuana users back in the day, but you may have seen people using it. Uh, but this is what it really looks like today. Next slide. This is what's coming to New York. You got marijuana candies, pot parts, marijuana drinks, uh, lollipops. Uh, next slide. We know all about the vaping crisis. A lot of these people ran into trouble because they're vaping THC products, which are legal in the marijuana states. So now there's going to be vaping. What's the danger of vaping? It doesn't smell like pot. Kids can bring it in to a school, uh, put their head down, take a vape, and nobody will know. Go into the boys' room and take a vape. There's no you know, traditional smell of pot or smoke or anything like that. And uh, they're going to load THC cartridges in there, and this is coming to New York. 
This is what they got there once. Uh, next slide, you have medical cannabis cotton candy uh, for people that, I don't know, what, what medical condition they have for that. But uh, next slide. This is what the marijuana looks like that's coming to New York. It's no longer just the dried out plant material that you're going to put in the joint. It's now highly concentrated, chemically produced THC products that are very, very high potency. Uh, some of the names here are green crack. Uh, there is butter. Butter is what you would mix in foods. It looks like it has like a buttery, creamy context. So it's going to go into cookies that kids might see and eat. Uh, they're having overdoses in Colorado because people are getting a marijuana brownie. And the instructions say uh, only use a little piece of the brownie. And so they use the little piece and nothing happens. So they eat the whole brownie and they wind up in the emergency room. Uh, so these are the products that are going to be coming in uh, to New York. Uh, next slide. There's no question, like alcohol, that, it, that, that it is going to be the marijuana addicts, the people that are going to be the most dysfunctional and problematic are going to be using most of the marijuana. Uh, this is from the Colorado Department of Revenue, uh, showing that 22% of the marijuana users are using 67%. So you're going to be just feeding addiction and creating more addiction. Now this next slide knocks me out. I can't believe that this actually happened, but I know it to be true. Um, the uh, Colorado Christian University has the Centennial Institute, and they sent a woman to call up all of the medical marijuana dispensaries. And she told them that she was in her first trimester of pregnancy. And what would they recommend? Okay. Over 60% of them recommended marijuana, including high potency marijuana. Um, we have women now that are being told that marijuana can help you deal with nausea in your pregnancy. Now there is very good data now that marijuana use in early pregnancy causes a variety of problems in the young. The pediatricians have come out against it, uh, and uh, the uh, gynecologists have come out against it, published it, and said, look, this is the data, do not use this stuff, don't go near it. It also can affect men in terms of affecting their ability to generate uh, good sperm. In one, one case, maybe the pot users will uh, breed themselves out of existence, I don't know. Um, but uh, it can include low birth weight, uh, uh, brain cancer, uh, and um, uh, mental problems in the children that can be lifelong uh, in these kids. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of the data coming out about that also. California, which we think would be the haven of pot, their Department of Health actually issued a very big warning to women, a two-page warning saying, look, don't touch yourself, it's dangerous. They also came out with a warning um, that marijuana smoke is a carcinogen, and yet the state went ahead and legalized it. I mean, it's just madness going on there. Um, next slide. The Journal of Pediatrics says that THC and breast milk uh, can stay up to six days after use of marijuana. Uh, and they're advising people to uh, avoid it in, in all costs with pregnancy, either as a man or as a woman. Um, next slide. Uh, and these are, these are things coming from the Colorado government, which actively promotes marijuana tourism in Colorado, and yet their government is publishing this data. 400% uh, increase in marijuana poisonings in kids uh, from zero to nine years of age. Um, 23,000 homes are not storing marijuana products safely. Uh, and uh, kids uh, in 30,000 homes are exposed to secondhand marijuana smoke because of what's going on with their parents. Um, there is going to be probably nothing in the New York law that will require any kind of parental responsibility on any of this. Next slide. Um, this is uh, some data showing uh, marijuana dispensaries in red, Starbucks in purple, McDonald's in white purple. You can see the dispensaries uh, in those states uh, outnumber all of those. That's coming to your neighborhood. Uh, next slide. 
one in four are 12th graders, according to the um, the uh, Monitoring the Future study, which is a very renowned study of drug use in the United States. Uh, one in four 12th graders said it was legalized. I'm going to try it. Next slide. This is a chart showing Colorado hospitalization rates related to marijuana, uh, how they've gone up since legalization. Now let's get down to deaths. Next slide. Colorado has had a 151% increase in marijuana impaired fatalities since uh, legalization, 151%. Uh, now, we had how many people get sick from romaine lettuce? Just a handful, right? Everybody went wild. They shut down the romaine lettuce industry. And yet we have data like this, and they're not doing a damn thing about it. Uh, Washington State, fatalities more than double. Oregon, 50% of all drivers assessed tested positive for marijuana. The workplace, the previous speaker brought up workplace concerns. Next slide. Uh, I'm an expert in drug testing. This is how much the positivity rate for marijuana drug tests, employment drug tests, have gone up. Oregon, 63%. The lowest is Massachusetts at 21%. Uh, you talk about people living in upstate having trouble getting workers to fix drug tests. And employers in Colorado are actually trying to hire out-of-state employees because they can't get anybody to pass a drug test. Uh, next slide. This is a slide, and I'm, I'm going through these very quickly because I'm going to be on time. Uh, this shows the increase. Uh, the red one are, is marijuana uh, oil going up for those who are not marijuana users. Uh, next slide. The marijuana in Oregon spreads out all over the country. They tell you that this is going to end the black market. That is a total lie. Let me tell you what's going on in California right now. Remember, one of the reasons that people were sold the marijuana is because it's going to reduce the impact of law enforcement, right? We all heard that. Well, uh, in order to uh, to set up a marijuana dispensary in California now, you have to collect taxes. They put a tax on marijuana. It's going to be a big uh, budget increase if we are able to tax marijuana sales. Well, guess what happened? The black market said, okay, well, we'll sell it to you cheaper uh, because we don't have to pay those taxes. And so now, the marijuana industry in California is now asking law enforcement to crack down the black market marijuana producers. And the, and the law enforcement out there is busier than ever in enforcing the marijuana laws. Next slide. In Oregon, just 18 to 30 percent of the marijuana produced in Oregon is produced in the legal market. All the rest of it is black market. It has not gotten rid of the black market. The only way to get rid of the black market, is, and, and by the way, the California dispensaries are now saying reduce the regulations on us because it hammers us too much. So, what they're actually saying is, we want to be closer to the black market in marijuana. Uh, so why even bother with legalization, okay? Uh, they want to be uh, on equal footing with black market marijuana. How good a job are the states in regulating this? Next slide. The Secretary of State in Oregon put out a really scathing audit saying that only 3% of the marijuana facilities in that state have been subject to audits. And that's pretty much the case because when they pass a law, they don't put any money in for enforcement uh, by design of the marijuana industry. So only 3% of people selling a dangerous product out there are even being ordered. Um, go to the next slide, and the next slide, and the next slide. Um, the social justice issue. Uh, arrests of African Americans in Colorado have gone up since marijuana was legalized. This is a big argument in New York uh, that more blacks are arrested for marijuana, they get their life through and they go to jail, all this kind of stuff. Uh, that is absolutely untrue, okay? Uh, in New York, nobody goes to jail for possession of small amounts of marijuana. It doesn't happen. The state decriminalized marijuana. You also have legal marijuana. So we don't have a bunch of young black kids in prison in New York or New Jersey uh, for marijuana possession. Uh, we haven't filled up our prisons. With in the federal prison, it's less than 1%. And there, you're in prison for possession of 151 pounds of marijuana. Uh, so this is just a, a, a lot of baloney. Uh, next slide. I've got uh, 
I think I'm at the end here. Let's just talk about revenues. Go to the next slide. Um, is this going to be a financial boom for New York? I don't think so. Look at the states that are realized. Less than 1% of the state budget comes in from marijuana. Is less than 1% going to make a big difference in New York? Is it going to provide a boom for it? No, absolutely not. Um, Connecticut, look at this one. Uh, is considered legalization. Next slide. On the left side are the estimated costs of legalization. Uh, absenteeism and work, workplace injuries, damage vehicles, drug driving, and so forth. Uh, far outweigh any potential revenue that comes in. I'll give you a, a, one other slide, uh, two other slides. Next slide. That's a pie chart of how much marijuana is put into the Colorado budget. Okay. Is it really worth causing all this mayhem in our state? For that, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, now, I'm going to end with just two slides. One, the support for legalization. Next slide. People confuse legalization with decriminalization. When people are told, this is a New York survey, that marijuana possession in New York is already decriminalized and medicalized, how much do you support legalizing? It drops down to 40%. You're being told that it's above 50%. It's not true. I'm just going to end with this one slide, my final slide. And I know this slide is completely accurate because I did the, I did the study on this. Um, the number one drug that's in the bodies of kids who commit suicide in Colorado from the age of 10 to 19 is marijuana, by far. The kids are dead. They do an autopsy. Marijuana is number one. That's coming to New York. Thanks. Any questions? Yeah. Do you think if we uh, push the uh, legislation for the potency uh, of marijuana that we might be able to uh, create some sort of stem to this push? Well, I think trying to reduce the potency would be very helpful. But let me tell you what happens. Marijuana is human. They bring in a bill. They say, this is a really tight bill. It really regulates us. We really think this is horrible. Uh, but we'll go along and then the bill passes, and guess what? They come back next year and lobby. It's exactly what they did in New Jersey with medical marijuana. We got the state to only put in 10% medical marijuana. It's now no limit. So, yeah, it will help because the high potency is the definite kill. The marijuana jump is not helpful. Any other questions? Okay, I'll, I'll be around until tomorrow. Um, if you have my handout, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.